What's going on everybody? I'm Average Joe and welcome to another Average video. All right, so I've had a ton of questions regarding the EcoWorthy server rack batteries and whether or not they will do closed loop communications with the new FlexBoss 21. Similar to this one right here, do EcoWorthy rack mount batteries communicate well in a closed loop with the FlexBoss 21? I've had a lot of people ask that question, so we are going to answer that today. And the short answer is yes, but I will show you. And then there's a few other batteries that I'm gonna show you as well. One of them is gonna be the Jacoper or Orient Power server rack batteries, which is also connected to the Global Power battery that I have right here. And then the last one's gonna be the wall-mounted Ethos battery from Big Battery. And then one of the other top comments recently for the FlexBoss 21 and the screen, if you bought the LCD screen, um, there's not really like a good place to mount it. So in the last video, I just mounted it inside the little door. But of course the problem with that, which really isn't a problem, you have to open the door to see the screen. I did get a comment from Steve G in Maine 207. Uh, he had a really good suggestion. I'll just show you whenever we get to that point. Alrighty, let's get to it. All right, first one is gonna be the EcoWorthy server rack batteries. I have four of them right here. Two of those are the version two, and then the other two are version three. But I also have two OUSK server rack batteries down here at the bottom, which also communicate with the EcoWorthy server rack batteries. All of these have the JBD BMS inside. Basically, all you have to do is go into the settings and change the protocol to Lux Power. That's basically all I did for this one right here. All right, so the top battery up here is gonna be my master battery. That's what this communication cable is right here. And then I have all the short communication cables going from one battery to the next all the way down. And the very last one is the OUSK battery right down here. All right, here are the EcoWorthy server rack batteries. Don't mind my messy battery cables on the side. Those are gonna change here shortly whenever I can get some bus bars along the side. So don't mind my messy wires. Anyway, right up here is my main communication cable going over to the inverter. And then I have all the short communication cables going from one battery to the next. Okay, and that's gonna go all the way down to the two OUSK batteries right down here. All right, here is the other side of that communication cable. I'm going through one of these couplers right here and going into a longer cable right here, which goes over to the FlexBoss 21. And that comes up over here along with these battery cables, comes up, and then it is this cable right over here. And that plugs in right here on the FlexBoss 21. All right, and then up here on the screen, you can see we're sitting at 71% state of charge. Battery voltage is 53.7 volts, and we're bringing in solar, charging the battery, and powering my house. Okay, so if we go over to the Pi, we will hit the battery option right there, and this is going to give you all of your battery specifications that you need to know or want to know. I think the main ones that you would like to know, of course, is your state of charge and state of health. So we're sitting at 71, just like I showed on the main screen. State of health is 100%. And then the cycle count is 41. Okay, next one down, battery capacity is 615 amp hours. Right below that's gonna be your max charging and discharging in amps. So we have six batteries and those technically wanna be charged at 50 amps a piece. So we have 300 amps for six batteries. And then for our max discharge, it is 600 amps, basically 100 amps per battery. Next one down is going to be your cell voltages. You get a high and a low. So the highest one is 3.364 volts. Lowest one in those batteries would be 3.355 volts. And of course, you get temperatures and all that kind of fun stuff in there. All right, that should be basically everything you want to know in here. Okay. All right, real quick, I was just going to show you solar assist and it basically shows you all the exact same information. So right underneath the battery, we're sitting at 53.7 volts and we're at 71% state of charge, which is what the inverter actually shows. And then if we click on that, it'll give you roughly the same information. So 615 amp hours, 71% state of charge, state of health, 100%. For our cell voltages, just like I said before, 3.364 volt is going to be our highest and the lowest is 3.355 volts, okay? Of course, it gives you temperatures and all that kind of stuff. And same thing down here for the max current, we have 300 amp for charge, 
and 600 amp for discharge. Alrighty, there you go. Hopefully that answered your questions. The EcoWorthy Server Rec batteries and the AUSC batteries do communicate in closed loop communications with the EG4 FlexBoss 21. And again, like I mentioned at the beginning, all I did for the Server Rec batteries is went in there and changed the protocol to Lux Power. And then for the EG4 FlexBoss 21, I am using option six. I could probably use option one, which is EG4 protocol because I think it's kind of the same as option six. Option six is Lux Power, but I just left it on option six because that's what I use on the last inverter. Okay, next I'm going to show you the Jacoper battery right here, and that is communicating with the two batteries below it, which are Orient Power. Sorry, it's a little hard to see, but there are two 230 amp hour Orient Power batteries sitting right there, which also loop up to the Gobel power battery right up here. All right, and we are going to hook up to these ones next. Okay, I also put solar assist up on the screen and I'm gonna do this live so we can see the battery percent state of charge change because the percentage is just slightly different. Okay, so I am going to go from the eco-worthy batteries right here, to unplug that, and then we're gonna plug into this one, which is the Jacoper Orient Power and the Gobel Power battery, okay? So we just jump from 71% up to 84% state of charge. And since we're here, I'm just going to basically show you the exact same information. So again, we're sitting at 53.5 volts, 84% state of charge. And then if we click on that, it's gonna give you all the exact same information. So the battery capacity over here is 858 amp hours. Same thing, 84% state of charge. State of health is 100%. Oh, one last thing I forgot to mention with the EcoWorthy batteries is the cycle count. Um, it also shows that as well. I think that one was at 41 cycles. I've actually had the Jacoper Orient Power and the Gobel Power batteries a little bit longer, so that cycle count is a lot higher. So we're sitting at 294 cycles. Same thing for the high and low cell voltages, so 3.356 and 3.347. Got your temperatures, and then for the max current charge and discharge, it is equally at 780 amp hours. All right, back on the FlexBoss 21 and the main screen. Again, we're sitting at 84% state of charge. Battery is at 53.5 volts. We're bringing in solar, charging the battery, and powering my house. We will go over to the little Pi, hit on battery. And again, it's gonna give you all the exact same information. And I guess the main ones that you would probably wanna see would be your state of charge, state of health. So 84%, 100%. There is my cycle count at 294. Our highest and lowest cell, 3.356, 3.348. So all of that information is reading correctly. Alrighty, there you go. That's gonna be the Jacoper, the Orient Power, and the Gobel Power all communicating together. Same thing as the EcoWorthy batteries. They are all four daisy chain together. Same thing, I went into the settings and changed the RS45 and CAN protocol over to Lux Power, and I didn't change anything on the FlexBoss 21. I'm still using option six. And then the last battery for communications that I have currently is gonna be the wall-mounted Ethos battery right here. For the Ethos battery, I also pulled up Solar Assist so we can do this live. I'm going to pull that one out and then I'm going to hook up the Ethos battery right here. We'll see that one change, hopefully. Boom, there we go. This one's sitting at 83% state of charge. I guess while we're here, we will go ahead and click on that. So right up here on the top, we're sitting at 600 amp hours, which is correct because I have six batteries and those are 100 amp hours a piece. State of charge, 83%. State of health, 100%. Cycle count, we're at 139 cycles. Right below that's gonna be our cell voltages, highest and lowest. So we're sitting at 3.361. Lowest is 3.350. You got cell temperatures, and then same thing for the max current charge and discharge. These ones like to be charged at 50 amps, so it is set for 300 amp charge because there's six. And then for discharge, we can do 600 amps or 100 amps per battery. Boom, up here on the FlexBoss 21 LCD screen, we're sitting at 83% state of charge. 
Battery voltage is 53.6 volts. We're bringing in solar, charging the battery, powering my house. We will click on the little pie graph and then click battery. And there's all of your specifications as before. State of charge, state of health, so 83 and 100. Cycle count is 139. And then if we go down to the cell voltages, high and low, 3.360 and 3.3. Four, nine. All right, so all of that communicates correctly. Boom, there you go. That is the communication for the wall-mounted Ethos battery. Again, I did the exact same thing. You go into the settings and change the RS45 and CAN port to Lux Power. And then same thing on the Flexboss 21. For the protocol, I am using option six. Alrighty, there you go. That is three different sets of battery communications, all working with the Flexboss 21 in closed loop communication. All right, next thing I wanna talk about real quick was the LCD screen for the Flexboss 21 or the Flexboss 18. If you ordered it, remember it is an optional thing. You don't have to get it. But if you did get it, basically there's not a real good place to put it. Some people will put it on the inside of the door. In the installation video of the Flexboss 21, I ended up hanging it off of a little tiny screw right below the circuit breaker right there because that's what I saw from Current Connected and I liked that idea. And then I did get a couple of comments of other people mounting it on the outside. A couple people would route the ribbon cable through the door right here so they can basically mount the door with maybe some sticky tape over here, which was basically what I was going to attempt to do. And then Steve G in Maine 207, I thought had a really good idea. What he said was remove the little tiny box on the left side, try laying the ribbon cable under the cover after routing it through the square cutout on the case. Use a few washers under the outer box so when you tighten the screws down, you know, you don't pinch the cable too much. It'll be less likely to get smushed whenever you open and close the door. Also, when you remove that plastic shroud, the cable won't be in your way. Could even mount it just above the door, a little to the left of the warning sticker, so it's close to eye level. You know, basically mount it, you know, sticky tape it wherever you want, you know, somewhere over here. All right, so I was going to route the ribbon cable through the door, but I just felt like I would pinch the cable off a little too much so I didn't do that. But I did go through the little tiny box on the side and I mounted it to the handle so I can just pull it out on the side like that, which I thought was kind of cool. This is the little tiny box that he was referring to on the side of the inverter. It is the little tiny box that you mount your Wi-Fi dongle up to. Okay, so that's exactly what I did is I removed my Wi-Fi dongle remove the four screws that hold this box on, remove the box, and then I was able to slip my cable through the hole behind that. And then he recommended or was thinking whenever you install this box, add a washer behind here, basically on each screw, so you can bring the box away from the inverter just a little bit to give you a little more room for the cable so you don't pinch it off. I actually did not add any washers because these screws are quite long. I just wasn't a gorilla whenever I tightened it down. All right, and then from there, here is my screen right over here on the side. I just mounted it right to the little side handle and I can actually swing it out from the side. So let me just show you the back real quick and how I mounted it. So I do have a little cable management, you know, guy right there just holding the cable up. But on the back side of the screen, I just had a scrap piece of aluminum. It was a square and I just cut out in an L shape. I drilled two holes right up here so I could mount the screen to the little L bracket. And then I have two little screw holes right over here for my little automotive Adel clamps. These clamps can be bought from any automotive store or on Amazon. All right, and I just screwed those right there. I actually drilled and tapped those so I could just mount my clamps right there. And I could actually flip it around to the other side so maybe you can see this side a little bit better. Here's a better view of the side and the Adel clamps that I used and those are mounted up to my little L bracket that I made back here and just mounted right to that handle, okay? Now, all we have to do is bring this forward and then your screen is facing forward. And then if you wanna tuck it back, you just tuck it back. I don't know, I thought that was kinda cool. So now we can just view everything 
from the front. And boom, there you go. We have the LCD screen that is viewable from the front side of the inverter. We no longer have to open up the door to take a peek inside. I don't know, I thought that was a pretty cool idea. The only thing that I'm unsure of is since these are now EMP hardened, since that is technically opened up and we got some wires coming out the side, I would imagine that could potentially mess with the EMP hardening function or whatever. Now, if anybody else has any other options that they did for mounting their screen, either if it's on the outside over here on the door, or maybe had a sweet way to do it on the inside, let me know in the comment section because I would love to read those. All right, well, that is pretty much all I got. I just wanted to answer a few questions and go over the LCD screen right here. If anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you put those down in the comment section and I will see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.